Hey everyone, it's Dominic, the Primetime Treasure Hunter. Thanks for coming by to check out another video. I am back in my garage with the two pallets from that storage unit. I know it's been a while since I've shown you any processing of that unit, but that's because I simply have not been able to get to any more boxes. Now, that's the bad news in a way, the good news is that I've already made all my money back on that storage unit. Now, for those of you who did not see my initial video, I'll post it at the end of this video, but I paid $450 for everything that you see there on those two pallets, plus below me a whole bunch of DVDs, a whole big case, about 225 to 250 of them, plus other boxes that are out of view right now. So mostly comic books, Dungeons and Dragons books, and um, let's see, there are like role-playing games besides Dungeons and Dragons, so a lot of good stuff here, and some miscellaneous games. Now, I made that $450 back primarily on the DVDs. Uh, there were some of those that went for crazy money. There was one that sold for $140. There was one that sold for uh, $82.50. There was another one that sold for $70. So right there, that's like half my money back on three DVDs. Absolutely crazy. So uh, I'm really pumped up. Uh, now I've made about, uh, I actually looked it up before I came out here, 17 sales from that uh, storage unit for a total of $493. And that's after all the fees, all the seller fees, after the shipping, that's not gross, that's the net after every single thing uh, has been accounted for in terms of fees. So, now that I have all my money back, that's exciting right there because that's all the profit right there. Not just there, uh, but also, you know, these are the DVDs I was talking to you about. So you can see some of these are gone. Uh, and then this is some other stuff right here that I need to uh, also process. And uh, we're gonna get to one of those boxes today. Uh, one other update for you is that I did find that some of those DVDs, not many, uh, about three, were counterfeit, uh, opened up inside and, uh, and saw that they just weren't official DVDs that said like Memorex or something. So I just tossed those. Don't list those on eBay or you're gonna get in trouble. Uh, so you definitely don't wanna do that. Okay, so the one other update I wanted to tell you is that with these role-playing game boxes that I found, these box sets, I've looked through four of them so far, and although initially I thought that they looked complete, and they did, uh, turns out that not one of them is complete. Now, some of them are mostly complete. They're missing like one thing, and what I decided to do is to hold off and not try to sell them as incomplete sets yet because there's so much stuff here that for all I know, like for one of them, it's missing a manual. That missing manual could be right there. So I'm just gonna hold off on it because I have so much other stuff to go through. It's no big deal just to wait on a little bit. Worst case scenario, uh, if I can't find those missing pieces, then what I'll do is I'll either try to sell it as an incomplete set or you could probably make more money on them by just piecing out certain elements for people who have the game and are just you know missing certain things that they wanna uh, fill in. I mean, a last option is for me to check in and see how much it would sell complete and then how much that missing piece gets and sometimes, or missing part, and purchasing it myself to complete the set. So I'll have to figure that all out later. Uh, just to let you know, if you're trying to figure out all the pieces that go into these box sets for these role-playing games, it's actually pretty easy to do because on the back of all of them right there, it's gonna tell you all the things that it comes with, so you just wanna open it up and just line everything up and just check off and just see, is everything included? And so uh, that's, that's the update with regards to that. Uh, but overall, again, it's very good news. I mean, just look at all this stuff. I mean, there's, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of stuff here. I, I don't know, I mean, it could be close to 10 grand worth of stuff, maybe even more. I, I don't know, we're gonna have to see, time will tell. Time to get through another box. The one that I decided to pick, and I have not done any kind of sneak peek inside of it, but I remember this one right here when we were at the sale. It's this one right here, which kind of intrigued me because the box that it's in is like all like bent and rickety and and just all kind of just just old looking. In fact, I remember this side of it when we were there. You look at it like that. I mean, that's pretty bad. 
Um, but it has me intrigued. I want to look at it some more. So let's go process that. Mrs. Primetime will be on the side, out of view as usual, but she will be helping me out. In fact, she's the one who inspired me to go through these boxes right now. She's like, let's do another box. Let's do another box. So she's pumped up to do another box. I'm pumped up to do another box. And I hope you're pumped up to do another box. So let's get cracking. Okay, well, you know we're about to process a box when Daisy has come over to start doing her quality inspection. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Mary, who is uh, the president of Daisy's Fan Club in Ohio. And if there's any other uh, presidents of Daisy Fan Clubs in other states, uh, let me know. And you can let Daisy know at her Instagram account. That's Miss underscore daisy underscore wobble on instagram but uh hey show your face there daisy your fans want to see you so let's uh let's start getting into this box i love the i kind of like the damage on the side of it when mrs primetime saw it she was kind of excited too so we're like yeah let's get into this one so all right we're gonna start processing it in just a second okay so so far i've pulled out a few things uh this one looks pretty good looks pretty promising this is the series warhammer uh, many people nowadays are familiar with it, but I have not seen one of these older ones before. One of these older Warhammer books, Dwarf Wars. This comes from 1990. It's pretty hard to come by. Uh, the cheapest you could find it right now, someone from Canada is selling it for $45 plus $15 shipping. And it has three watchers on it. So this will be an easy sell. Remember, I have all my money back now, so I could set this at any price I want. It gives me the freedom to do that and I could um, just get a lower price in there compared to my competition. Uh, there's some good uh, Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition book, which look like uh, they're in pretty good shape. I mean, a little crease here or there, but that's the Villains, uh, Psionics Handbook, and we've got the uh, Fighters Handbook. So they look pretty decent um, just from you know quickly skimming them, not any big uh, you know amount of writing in them or underlining or highlighting or anything like that. Uh, then I uh, came across this uh, uh, Star Wars uh, book. This is uh, some kind of uh, role-playing game or uh, a guide for one of the for one of the um, one, one of the games. It's called. You could tell that because it says source book. So uh, then there's some more of this um, Ravenloft. If you remember that from the prior video, I saw some of that. So I'll actually put that in a separate pile, and we'll add that to our prior Ravenloft uh, grouping of items. Uh, then there are some uh, more Dungeons & Dragons books, like some of these older classic ones, some of which are in good shape, like this uh, and this one here. So these are ones that look like they're from the 80s, probably the mid-80s. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, so actually early 80s on this one, 1983. Uh, I was talking about that in the prior video. Uh, as you could just tell, they're just super thin, and they usually have these little... Um, reference numbers on top and letters so uh, that's kind of a giveaway uh, of course with the box being as damaged as it was you're gonna find some damaged things in there you know like this and that's gonna be tough to sell like that but you never know maybe you could find someone who needs the map although even the map is damaged so this one might just be a loss right here uh, but you know again you don't feel so bad about these types of things when you've got your money back from the collection uh, so, you know, you kind of breathe easy about those kind of things. Then, I don't know, uh, let's see, we've got an old Dragon Magazine here. Uh, actually, we've got a couple of them. Uh, so I'll have to look those up. Uh, I don't know what Daisy, th maybe Daisy, could you go check the comps on, uh, on these Dragon Magazines? <laughs> let's see, these have got to be from the 1980s, these Dragon Magazines. I could just tell because of the type of art that's inside and the type of ads that are inside. So I'll just have to look them up and see um, you know, what value they might have. I'm not uh, sure. So, uh, all right, so we're gonna move over here. Uh, there's some Spelljammer books that's through uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, so I'll, I'll have to look the value up on these as well. I'm not sure. I mean, I was saying last time, you know, a lot of these you could make an average estimate that you know, a lot of these are like 20, 30 bucks a piece. You know, even if you think about it, you get 15 bucks for something like this, and it's um, you know media mail, so 275. You're still making good profit on these items, um, and they 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 tend to sell pretty quickly. Uh, there are some kind of random pages that I'm just gonna look through. Some things, you know, with some writing. So I, I just have to check it out, just make sure I'm not throwing out 
you know, anything bad. If there's anything like this, like a cover, I suggest you hold onto it because you never know when you're going to come across the actual inner contents. So uh, like this is a very good example. These sell very well, these Marvel superhero role-playing games. I've sold these off in big lots before, uh, but it's missing the uh, inner content here, but uh, it might be around somewhere. So we just have to hold on to it. You know, you put it to the side and you wait to see, you know, if it, if, you know, if it comes up anywhere. So uh, there's some coverless items too. I've talked a lot about TSR as a great company for, uh, you know, and that's right here, by the way, you can see that TSR. If you're new to my videos, always purchase anything that says TSR on it, as long as you get it for a good price, they resell. But another one is FASA, F-A-S-A. Those also resell very well. Um, now, what we have here, and we've got to look at this in more detail, you know, this looks like obviously a lot of items with some damage on it. And uh, Mrs. Primetime saw and was, you know, nervous that, oh boy, all these items are damaged. And certainly some of them are. Like this Star Wars book here looks completely destroyed. I don't think there's anything we could do with that. However, what my eyes fixate on right now is something like this, like this Advanced Dungeons and Dragons book. That looks like a good one, so we're gonna pull that one out in a moment. And then there's just these other thin books, and I'm telling you, some of these we're gonna be able to recover, and they're gonna have uh, some pretty good value. I could just tell, I just have a feeling, so we're gonna pull them out in just a few moments. So, I'm waiting for Mrs. Primetime to come in. She's taking Daisy out for a little walk. So I don't want to process this stuff without her because she likes doing that. But, um, you know, I'm looking at this Dungeons and Dragons one right here that, that's ruined and it's damaged. And, you know, while this is in obviously pretty bad shape, the actual inner contents of it here are, you know, pretty decent. I mean, not perfect, but, uh, you know, all the pages are there. And while this book, when it's complete, will generally resell for about $30. Um, there is someone right now who's just trying to sell this. Now he's trying to sell it for 15 bucks and he doesn't have any watchers on it yet. And I don't know if it would sell for 15 bucks, but you know, maybe it sells for 1250, maybe even 999. I mean, better than just tossing it out and throwing it out. Again, especially when it's just so light and you know easy to ship. This goes medium mail all day. So uh, I'm gonna hang on to at least this part of it um, because you know it's possible this could still resell just given how old it is. All right, so what do y'all think? Do you think that we could flatten this one out and, uh, and still resell it? Mm, I would say no, this has gotta be the worst warping of a book that I have ever seen. I mean, this thing has basically turned into like a football inside that box over all these years. I mean, that's just unbelievable, it's crazy. So uh, we cannot do anything with that. Now, this is another story though. Now this is bent, I have to look this up. I have a good feeling on this one in terms of value. Unfortunately, it is pretty bent, but it's nowhere near as bent as the Star Wars book that I just showed you. So. Uh, I'm gonna look this up and I'm gonna see if this is something worth trying to salvage in some way. All right, well, it's as I suspected. I mean, this book has sold for as high as $88. So this is gonna be a little restoration project for me. Uh, what we have to start to do with this is to try to press this book cover down and get it flat. And then inside, there's a lot of uh, mold damage that's gonna need to be cleaned out of this. Uh, there's no way you're ever gonna be able to get this back to normal but we may be able to get it back to a state that it's resellable. So that'll be a little side project that I do uh, on these. Now there's a whole bunch of other things that are being pulled out of here right now. Uh, we actually have a garbage bag for some of it because it's just some of it's just in such bad shape that we, uh, we can't do anything with it. But I mean, I don't know. Like this one here, White Dwarf from uh, Games Workshop. Now it's, it's warped and it's pretty damaged down there uh, in the corners, uh, but I don't know. Oh, wow, look inside there. That is pretty bad. You know, and that really is, that really frustrates me because I had this book when I was younger. Um, it really brings back memories and this book is worth a lot of money. For some reason, we found a random tool in here. I don't even, 
some snippers or something. But uh, you know, this this is really frustrating because it's just I, this is just worth a lot of money if um, you know if it was in great shape. But now it's completely destroyed. Uh, I mean, look in there. This is definitely the worst box. So it's good that we went through it. Not even gonna try to save that one. It's too far gone. So these things are just gonna get tossed. And um, that's what happens when you buy bit things in big lots though. You're gonna get items that are damaged and you're taking the damaged items along with the items that are, you know, $140 DVDs. I mean, that's just what happens. And that's how I explain it to people when I make deals. You know, they'll tell me, oh, well, you know, you've got some things in here that are worth a lot of money. And I say, oh yeah, I know. But I also have things in here that are, you know, like this, that are, you know, filled with mold and damaged and I can't do anything with them. And I gotta chuck them. So, uh, you know, that's how you counter that and that's what you use for your negotiation. So I'm not surprised based on the outside of the box that we've got a bunch of damaged pieces in there. Uh, look at this. If Esme's watching this, she might like this. We've got a, the, the Klingons here. And you know, this might be something that I could save. I mean, let's, let's look in the inside of it. I mean, this is, this is a perfect example of what I mean. You wanna find a few items in there that you could possibly save. It's just caught up a little on the corners there. But uh, yeah, I think this one we could save and we could try to resell. I just looked this one up. It's about a $15 book, you know, if it's in decent shape. So maybe we could squeeze 10 bucks out of it. I don't know, we'll have to see. Uh, let's just sort through a Miss Primetime. She's, she's done, she, she's done getting mold all over her hand. So uh, she's tapped out at this point for, for this box. So uh, let's see, this one here, this is too far gone as well. It's a magazine with the cover ripped off, so just gotta toss that one. This one, it's worth at least holding on to and look at it later, just because it has the cover on it. Let's see what we got here. Um, this is something that looks like the cover's gone, I believe. I'm not sure, it's some kind of fantasy book. I'm gonna hold on to it to look into it more later just to see if it has any value without the cover. Uh, here we go again. Uh, this is another one of those Dragon magazines, but it's it's earlier. It's much earlier. Um, looks like it's gotta be 80s, maybe even 70s. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see if I could find in here if it says. Hmm. 1983, so let me look this one up. Okay, so this particular magazine is pretty much worthless in and of itself, by itself. The reason I'm still gonna hang on to it though is that if I could come across uh, more of them, they will sell in lots, but not for much. So like, you could sell like 21 of them for 25 bucks, so uh, you know that's what we'd be looking at. So I'm just gonna hang on to it just in case I come across another stash of it later on. Uh, let's see, over here, we've got a Han Solo uh, Star Wars item here. It's again, a role-playing game type of book. We've got some warping inside of it, I'm not sure. And, oh, it's 1990, so it's not like it's super old. Uh, this mold here on the side of it, th that just wipes off. I'm gonna have to show you that in a later video about cleaning these things up. But don't worry about that stuff. Uh, don't throw it out because of that. You could just easily wipe that stuff right off. Uh, so we'll hold on to this one. Okay, so looks like here we've got some more uh, magazines. Now these ones without the cover on it. I think I'm just gonna toss these. I don't think we, we wanna hold on to that. But here's one of these dragon magazines again. So you know maybe I'll hold on to it for now. See if we can build up a little collection. Here's one without the cover. So we're gonna toss it. Um, the Woodland Creed Druids, no idea. A little bit of damage on the bottom, but we'll hang on to it to investigate a little bit later. Uh, Forgotten Realms, uh, Dragonomicon, I don't know. Uh, some warping inside, but this one looks like one we could save. So I'm gonna save this one. Maybe we could do something with that. Uh, again, another coverless. Just gonna toss these coverless ones. These coverless ones, they're just not gonna sell. So we're gonna get rid of those. 
Uh, interesting, because this is from that series I just showed you earlier from that role-playing game uh, set that I said was incomplete. Now, I don't think this goes to it, but it's it, it at least it's the same title, so I could maybe combine it with that one and like throw this in there as like an extra. So that's why I didn't sell those uh, sell those sets yet because of things like this that might pop up. So another coverless, another Dragon magazine. See, now we could build up enough of these, we could still sell them. So uh, let's see, this one here. It's not a magazine. This is one that I might find a matching cover to later on, the War Machine Redux. So I'm gonna hang on to that because we might find the cover to that later. Uh, this is a nice older Dungeons and Dragons uh, guide right here. So has the cover on it, a uh, little bit of damage to the back. The inside, a little bit of damage as well. Some warping, some mold on the side we gotta clean off. But uh, we could probably do something with this one, given that it's uh, this one's got to be from the 80s. So uh, let's see. I'm going to say probably like maybe 85, something like that. Let's see. 86. So not too bad. Pretty close. What do you think, Daisy? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. With too much mold over here for Daisy, too. Daisy's like, I'm done. I'm done. I don't want any more of this mold. All right, uh, again, just some more, oh, Dungeon Master's book. So see, what I'm doing is anything that's like a guidebook that might have a missing cover floating around, I'm holding on to that. But anything like this that's just like some old worthless magazine, this I'm tossing because these are not going to sell with the cover detached from them. Dungeons & Dragons guidebooks, different story. That we're going to toss. This we're going to toss as well. It's just some worthless warped book. Uh, this is an older Star Wars item. We would really have to work on this to get this in sellable shape because it's just so warped on the spine. So we'll hang on to it for now, but I'm not sure if we'll be able to do anything with that one. And then mm, this one here. Looks like we've got another coverless item here, uh, I think. Or is this the cover? This is the cover, I think. So, yeah. Okay, it's not coverless. This is the cover. So, and that's not a rip. That's actually what it looks like. So, I have to look this one up uh, and see if we there's anything we could do on this one. I doubt it, but we'll see. So, Okay. Uh, as you can see here, we've got a lot of damage uh, here, but that's to be expected in a box like that. We were able to salvage uh, some items from there that we could sell. Uh, these look like the best items here. We've got a little bit of a restoration project uh, on our hands with this one, but I'm looking forward to that. And, you know, and then we've got a few other thin books here and some other you know, you know, things that don't have the contents inside, just the covers. Maybe we could do something with that later. And by the way, there was one random comic book that we found in there, Wildcats. If you ever see that, it's really worthless. Um, so just don't don't even bother hanging on to it. Just, just get rid of it. Just sell it at a garage sale or something. You probably won't even sell it there, but just it's not going to be something that you're going to get much money on or, or any money for that matter. This is probably the one I'm the most excited about, this old Warhammer. A book so I mean that's really a nice shape nice vintage piece very happy about that uh, value on it is really good uh, these spell jammer books I looked these up these are about 20 bucks a piece or you could sell them together uh, so uh, those are nice as well and that's kind of on par with what I was telling you about most of these books you know 20 to 30 bucks a piece on them for the most part uh, but there's just a ton of them but you know every once in a while you're gonna come across one that goes for a lot more because it's just uh, you know just a more rare piece it's more desirable uh, there's not a lot of them around so uh, those are you know it's great whenever you can find ones like that in the box so very very happy about this one
Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm already starting the process of getting this book flattened or at least much more flat than the curvy mess that it was before when you saw it. So what I'm starting to do is just taking the book and just pulling it and pulling it and just making sure you're trying to get it as flat as possible. And so what you can see here is that that has started to flatten this out somewhat, okay? Now, that's going to cause some creasing here, but that's okay because you could sell it with some creases in the cover. You can't sell it completely curved up and bent. So this is at least better right now. At least I could take this now and I could open this and I could make it look much more presentable. Now, this is just an initial stage of what we're trying to do to fix this one up. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do a little bit of pressing with it. I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. Okay, so with book pressing, what you're doing is you're just putting a bunch of weight on top of the book. So this is the book, as you can see it right here, and I'm just putting all of this weight right on top of it, which isn't a ton. This is just an initial step just to get it a little more flat, and then I'm gonna take it out later and put some heavier books on top of it in a separate section. This is just something for me to do real quick right now uh, before I start paying a lot more attention to this. So I'm gonna push this in a little bit more and uh, or pull this out a little bit more and because uh, I wanna cover that whole area there. It's just hard to do it with, uh, with one hand. Okay, so there you can see now, it's all covered right now, and uh, this weight is just gonna keep pressing on top of it. Uh, and over time, that should flatten it out a little more. Then we'll flip it, we'll do the other side at a later point, we'll just keep doing it until um, you know we get this as flat as possible, and then I'll start working on doing some of the cleaning inside at a later day. All right, well, Mrs. Primetime does not want to keep waiting anymore to get to a comic box. So she told me to just grab one of these comic boxes out here and we're gonna go look through one of them. So might as well just grab this one right here. See what's in this baby. All right, well, Daisy was taking a nap, but uh, she is back out to look through these as well. So we'll see what we got in here. Uh, this prime time's already taken a few out of here. So we'll go through them. If I find anything good, I will let you know. Right now, these just look like some uh, basic ones that she pulled out. I don't think anything too uh, exciting. Let's see here. Um, nothing. It's mostly modern books. Number ones, number one issue, Firstborn, House of Mystery. Anything that says Vertigo on it, by the way, just so you see that right there. That is DC Comics imprint for horror-related comics. So and some of those go for good money. Depends. You want to lot these things together as best as possible. All right, we're going to go through the rest of the box, and uh, I'll put the camera on if we find anything good. All right, so nothing too amazing or anything, but there are some good titles that if I find enough of them and put them together in some lots, I could do well. Like Witchblade is one to look out for, so I'm just trying to give you some series names and titles to, to see. So uh, that would be one, like, you know, Miss Primetime just pulled this one out right here. So, and, and, and she has some more of them. So, you know, there's a bunch of these Witchblades, so, so that's good, so we have that. Um, I want to draw your attention to the name of this comic company, Comico. So this is from the 1980s, this is a 1988 book. And if you could find enough of these and lot them together, uh, they could sell well. There are a bunch of people who do look for anything that's Comico in the 80s. So that's just another little uh, tip for you. Uh, this one at least has Deadpool in it, so that's good. So always look for this character right here. And you can see right up there, right up top, we've got his name. So anything Deadpool, this book in and of itself won't sell for a ton, but still you can combine it with other Deadpool items and do well with it that way. And this here, uh, pay attention to anything Miss Marvel right now. The movie just came out, has very good reviews, and anytime that happens, 
the values of the books tend to go up. So we'll look to see if we can find any more Ms. Marvel related stuff. Another series that is good that I have done very well with over the years is Gen 13. So make sure you keep a lookout for that. They tend to sell well in lots uh, together and looks like we have a bunch of Gen 13 uh, related comic books. So uh, that's good. This is a different one right here, uh, but this is good just to see a few of these, a number zero, a number one. Uh, we'll just keep looking, see if we can find any more stuff. Okay, I love to find G.I. Joe related comics, especially if they're in near mint or mint condition. And these are really nice, especially if you get a nice little consecutive run. So we got issue six, got issue seven, got issue eight. These are made by Image, right there, you can see that. So pay attention to that company. Image and Dark Horse are really the two independent comic book lines uh, that are really pretty popular with fans. Uh, so just, you know, if it says image on it, it may be something that's good. So just as a little, little indicator to check on things, if you see that, uh, but they're not always guaranteed. Like those wildcat comic books were image and those aren't worth anything, but you know, you can see here, we got number nine, we got number 10. So it's good to have a nice consecutive run and hopefully we could find some more uh, in other boxes and make a big G.I. Joe lot. Okay, another title I like to look for is Transformers. It's just a collectible title in general, whether it's comic books or not. And uh, right here you could see we have issue number one, we have issue number two, issue number three, uh, issue number four, and then the start of another series, Transformers Armada. So it's good that we have number one issues. It's good that we have consecutive one, two, four. And I'm hoping that we have other Transformers comics around because this is a kind of series being more modern that we need to lot it together in order to sell the books. So hopefully uh, we'll see some other ones around. All right, well, just when you thought everything was gonna be brand new in there, we did come across some uh, early 1980s books. Uh, this is Night Force. Now, so far we've got issue three, we've got issue four. Uh, let's see here, we've got five, we've got seven, and actually, sorry, out of order there. We do have six and seven. Now there's supposed to be 14 of these and we've got a number nine. And again, they could just be spread out throughout those boxes. But if you have all 14 of them, they could go for around 25 bucks. So we'll just uh, put it to the side and hopefully we can find the other ones. Of course, uh, Tarot, Witch of the Black Rose. Uh, this is that uh, title I've told you about that I've made a lot of money with. Uh, Miss Primetime also pulls out a Batgirl number one, so uh, that's uh, that's pretty cool. So uh, we'll just put that to the side. Hopefully we find some more Batgirls to combine that with as well. And no sooner than I say that, then there's Miss Primetime pulling out another Batgirl. So, you know, things are just spread all over the place, and that's not just within this box. That means across the boxes, so we've got to put this all together to figure out everything we have here. Okay, one of the things I wanted to pass on to you as an important tip, especially if you are brand new into comic books, is that you have the title of the book, but then you sometimes have a storyline like this, Secret Invasion, that will cut across several different comic book titles. What I mean by that is that since the title of this comic is Black Panther, then this right here is the title of the storyline. And as you can see here, if you go to Thor, you're gonna see Secret Invasion carries on there in terms of the theme of the story. Uh, there we've got it here over in the New Warriors series in multiple books, you'll see it say Secret Invasion. Uh, you'll see it over here in Nova. You'll see it over here in The Incredible Hulk. Uh, you'll see it here in X-Factor, Secret Invasion. Uh, there we've got it in Black Panther again, the Inhumans. So uh, 
you know, sometimes people will think that the title of the comic is Secret Invasion, but it's not. That is actually just the title of the storyline. And so rather than separating these books out underneath their, um, you know, the title of the comic, it's best for something like this to just lot the books together based on the storyline and then you sell them as the secret invasion lot or the secret invasion storyline and it's just a collection of things related to this uh, this plot uh, for this story so that's the best way to sell these and um, you know just wanted to pass that on as a little tip for you all right a few last titles to show you here this is warrior nun now she does sell pretty well i have had her before in different uh, comic collections that i've purchased her real name is ariella but she also goes by the warrior nun so don't mess around with her unless you're one of these other superpower women like uh tarot which is the black rose or she hulk maybe maybe they can mess with her but in general you don't want to mess with the warrior nun uh, there's the 500th issue of the Uncanny X-Men, so that's pretty cool to have that Wolverine right there. And this Moon Knight is cool because it has Venom uh, sticking his big tongue out. So anything with Venom with this character that looks like Spider-Man, you know, pick it up even if you can't sell it by itself as this one issue because it's with a different character, Moon Knight. Uh, you could just combine it and toss it in with other Venom-related items, and you could increase value that way. And Black Panther, anything with Black Panther in it, the movie was super popular. He is a great character, so just make sure you pick those up. And if you need to, just lot them together to make them more sellable. All right, everyone, so this box is eliminated, and everything's been transferred over to here nice and neat and organized um you know there weren't too many great and amazing titles there there were some things that had some potential we'll see what we will do going forwards with how we're going to sell the things that are in here there's lots of different possibilities all right everyone i hope you really enjoyed that um down here at primetime treasure headquarters packing up a 50 dollars comic book that was paid for just now it's 3 30 in the morning i've got to start getting ready editing this video getting ready for work the next day it's a crazy life anyway if you appreciate the time uh putting these videos together for you if you appreciate what you saw if you liked it you enjoyed it smash that like button for me make sure you subscribe to the channel pass it on to others uh, come by to the facebook group the facebook reselling resource center the link to that is down below and make sure you follow me on instagram that's at prime underscore time underscore treasure see you back at the next video everyone keep working hard see you later